game where you're going to want to wear your studs, whether you're a defender, a goalkeeper, or even a forward who they don't always like to choose those. Espinoza had one turn back. Vaco. Espinoza retreating, controlling. And Thompson, this is a lefty from Espinoza, skipping by the keeper. Thompson came up a little bit short. An attempt from Erickson, blocked by Alonzo. Molino. Talk so much about his defense. He has Minnesota United FC on the board to lead 1 0. Came in from Grey Goose, the attacking run of Ike Parr. He loses his marker, which is Osvaldo Alanis, and he gets in front of him and just powers it past Daniel Vega. The pace on the ball was such that Vega can't come for that one. He's looking for help from his defenders. He comes and stops just a little bit, maybe. Alanis, Danny Hooson, Erickson slipping one through, Vaco, and this one easily handled by the former LAFC keeper, Tyler Miller. Buxall going right through Kashia. Quick scrambly to get back. Dropping to Lude. Erickson. So United not out of danger left. Tommy Thompson goes down at the edge of the 18. Baldomero Toledo motions for play to continue. He's going to have to look at this one, VAR. I think there's a touch here that goes on to Tommy Thompson. Quakes bench looking on. Toledo, the veteran. And he will go over and take a look at the monitor now. Yes, it is. I honestly don't know why it took so long, Daniel. I really, I really don't. Erickson. Can he make it 1-1? One, one? Yes, he does. Go, San Jose. And it's 1-1. One, one. It's a really good reaction, isn't it, by the Earthquakes to come back after giving up a disappointing goal in the set piece, but Saverson takes responsibility. A little bit of a hesitation there allows the time for him to see Tyler Miller make the first move, and when he does, he slots it into the corner. It's a really well taken penalty kick by the captain for the night. Espinoza. Ah! Dropping for Alan East. Right past Vaco. And out for a goal kick. Well, if he'd have scored this one for his second one in two, <laughs> two games, I don't know what I'd have done, but that would have been a really nice finish inside the left foot. You can see he was trying to see what we're talking about. And, you know, he's talking about the fact that in practice, the tears is just asking him to put it on frame. And so, you know, that kind of ball with that kind of velocity can hit anybody going to back towards the goal. It just happened to go in the top corner. How about Espinosa putting a left foot on? Went near post. And though he had Vaco just outside of the six-yard box and Andy Rios not too far away. Like the fact that he wants to get on the end of those goals. He's getting so many assists, but I need to see him on the score sheet this year. Greg Oosh putting the shot on. And Minnesota goes back on top. Jan Gregush, and it's 2-1, Bloons, and has opened the account this year. It's not really a counter-tap because there's plenty of people back there for the earthquakes, and Nick Lima's probably got to read that and get out there quicker to put more pressure on Gregush. He's put a really good strike on goal, but... Finley on the run. Dropping. And Amaria putting it up into the bar. Gopara lost his footing. 29-year-old Frenchman, Metinair. 
Amaria. Another headed ball past Daniel Vega. Amaria's first goal in MLS. Correction, second goal in MLS. Two in two games, and it's a really good ball that comes in from Kevin Molino, and he's pulled away from Goran Cashier, found some decent space. And it's a good header. It's a decent header on frame. But, you know, Daniel's got a good hand to that one and maybe could have done a little bit better. But you can see the timing and the movement of the run from an experienced striker in Amaria. Flat-footed Guram Cashew, and it's a decent finish in the end. And time. Raiko Para. Able to win it back. Amaria. Going to try and... Wind one around, Daniel Vega. Amaria, Gregouche, Opara. Can the Quakes get one back here? Boxall. Oh, wait. Come on, the 22 year old. 31st overall pick in last year's Super Draft. So Molino goes to the bench and Dotson comes on. Able to win it back. Danny Hooson keeping his feet. Espinoza, there's the cross. Boxall and Rios came together and out for a corner. Boxall can't believe it. Boxall again. He's onside. There's the shot. That one skips harmlessly wide. From the near side. All kinds of contact and a penalty. Opara was taken down in the first half. Well. Once again, it's the, the confusion this, with this particular setup on these set pieces where people are trying to track, and it's very similar to the one that Josie Altador drew against Andy Rios, and I have to say that Vega waits. The run-up. Amaria, saved by Vega. Shot put on. Goal, Minnesota United FC on the rebound. Save. Not the best penalty, he's had a good height for any goalkeeper to save, but it's Robin Ludd that reacts quicker than anybody else in a blue, a black or a white shirt and puts the rebound past Daniel Vega, makes it 4-1 for Minnesota United. First goal for Ludd. The Finnish international, first career MLS goal for the 26-year-old. And Baldomero Toledo signals the end. Of the opening half, Ike Opara has a goal. He got things started. Amaria added one in the 32nd minute. But looking for that jump to start the second half. Uh, getting rid of uh, Quintero, as you mentioned. He's gone to Houston. Espinoza. Vaco. And Ozzy Alonso onside. He's got some help. Dotson trying to slide it through. And back, a dangerous one, as Finley. Erickson chipping it. Dropping for Vaco! Redirected in front! Goal, San Jose! And the quick strike first in the second half, 4-2. Work on the right-hand side, initially by Espinosa and also Thompson. And it was Magnus Eriksson that got the second chance cross into the area. Well defended by Boxer, but Vaco's got quick feet. For Espinosa, cutting it back onto his left foot. There's the cross, dropping for Vaco. Vaco puts the shot on. He had an opportunity maybe to find Tommy Thompson at the top of the 
penalty, Eric. Very limited inventory remaining, so get going. Learn more and secure your premium experience while you still can at sjearthquakes.com. Cowell going to put the drive on and whistled that one past the post on the near side and up into the bar. Physically very strong for his age as well, and I think he, well, we know he can play with this group of players. It's a good opportunity for him. I liked how aggressively he ran towards Chase Casper there and was willing to take him on 1v1. Dotson, spilled by Vega. Amaria couldn't. Uh, JT and others played with the Reno group last night as well, along with Marcus Lopez, and so they're getting the experience playing against older players as well, and that puts you in a situation where you can be young KCAL. Magnus Eriksson. Will come on for Guram Kashia. This been, uh, I guess, the way you feel about Amaria and how he's looked. I think he's looked very good, and he is somebody who people need to continue to watch, even when he's not around the ball. He has very intelligent movement off the ball. He hovers in the right spots. Cal putting that right in the path of Rios, but Tyler Miller got there first. The thing that is happening on this set piece is a lot of holding going on, and both of the holding calls that have happened so far, Opara, have gone against the earthquakes. Ike Opara has the brace tonight. Two-headed home volleys off the corner, and it is five to two, Minnesota United FC. It's a good ball again by Gay Grush, and it's won well by Echo Power. The question is how Boxel in front of Daniel Vega, as he screamed or got in the way of the goalkeeper before the ball went in the back of the net. That's what Magnus Eriksson is asking for, saying there was some contact potentially on Daniel Vega by Boxel as well. Fancy work, good shape by Minnesota. As soon as they step out, they press the ball, getting good numbers around. Well read by Alonso there. Vaco winning it back. Putting the shot on. Went to the right of Miller, but just wide of the mark. Foul here on Alonso by Vaco from behind, but he stripped the ball from him, and he nearly took advantage of it, got some space for himself, took the shot. He's been a lot brighter in the second half, the Georgian. Wondolowski knocked down. Play continues from distance. Ozzy Alonso. Hopeful ball, but Quakes will have a goal kick. Not have the numbers, but he's getting some help from Rios and Vaco. Wando laying it off for Andy Rios. Ozzy Alonso putting the pressure on. Rios goes right by him, dropping it off for Vaco. And he rolled it right into the waiting mitts of Tyler Miller. And Amarillo will come off his second goal of the year. An area that I would look to continue to exploit and look to keep an eye on if I'm playing Minnesota United next week too. Finley. For Dotson. They're very well organized and drilled that defensive unit for Minnesota. Gregush took a deflection from Shea Salinas out for another corner. Four straight victories by the Earthquakes in this head-to-head -head series. Minnesota looking to make it three straight. Headed right to Daniel Vega. And this time, Vega able to get a hand on it and keep it from crossing over that line. Another free header. This time, looks like Kay Cowell's the man marking Michael Boxall. But there's definitely confusion. And again, actually, I think it's Wando's man, and it's a decent save this time by Daniel Vega. Cowell. And that blast right into the back of Edwards. Good stepping again by Ike Opar. Is that a good evening? Great evening for young Ike. Valdemaro Toledo signaling the end of this one.